Thank you for celebrating the Sabbath with me this evening. God bless you, and that's exactly what God wants to do is bless you. We have been talking about God's top ten, and in his top ten, we're finding out it's all about grace, it's all about love, it's all about God helping you hit the mark and find your purpose and find joy in life. Praise God. So, we are starting the Sabbath, and we're starting it out right. We're starting out with the bread. We're starting it out with the cup, and we're partaking together, and we are ready to move on to God's top ten, number five, the fifth commandment. We'll read it here in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. It says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. This is a powerful, powerful phrase. It sounds like a commandment I want to do. I want to live long, and I want to be in the land that God is going to give me. <laughs> Amen. Now, this fifth commandment makes a transition from the first four. The first four commandments are God's instructions about our relationship with him. Now the fifth commandment begins how we start dealing with relationships with other people. And it's no better place to start than with our father and mother. And the reason that is, as a child, we need to begin to learn respect and honor at a young age. And it says, if we do learn honor and respect at a young age, we will live a long life. We will live a prosperous life. Now, if we look at the Hebrew and if we take each Hebrew word and fill it in and kind of translate it, it, it comes out something like this. Promote, glorify, with rich abounding honor, the chief in your life and your dam that encloses and controls your flow. The chief is your father. The dam is that which causes the water to back up and forces it to flow in a certain direction. So your father is like the chief. He, he is the head honcho of the family, but your mother helps control the flow. And so if we will honor them, then God has a promise for us. So we do that from sunset to sunset, just like uh, we do the Sabbath. We keep the Sabbath holy from Friday evening to Saturday evening. This commandment says every evening to the next evening, your life will be blessed. So we start this process then of learning respect at an early age. Ephesians 6, 2, it says, Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise, that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. So we see here very clearly that Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus, and he's bringing out this commandment. He's just simply saying one of the commandments. Now, again, I'm a little bit adamant about this. There's way too many false teachers that saying that Jesus did away with the commandments. Well, Paul is teaching this commandment right here to the church at Ephesus, probably because there were some rebellious children in church and he wanted to start teaching them. But it says here that as a child, they need to learn how to honor uh, their father and mother. And Paul makes it very clear. He says, this is the first commandment with a promise attached to it. In other words, I promise you, if you will honor your father and mother, you will end up living a long life. Now, that doesn't mean because your parents won't beat you. That just means you will grow up understanding this powerful word called respect and honor. And respect and honor will cause you to live abundantly and cause you to advance and cause you to prosper. Amen. 1 Timothy, or excuse me, 1 Peter, 1 Peter 2.17, it says, Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. So therefore, it starts not only with your children here, but it also starts with you, parents. 
So this commandment, honor your father and mother, we all have a father and a mother. So it starts with the role of the parent. So what we have to understand, after, God, after all, God is our parent. So how do we begin teaching our children this commandment, honor your father and mother? Well, they have to see you do it. First of all, we start with God is our father. And as we honor God as our father, we keep his commandments, we worship him, we don't take his name in vain, we keep the Sabbath just like he said to keep it holy, our children begin to see uh, honor your father in living color before them. So as we honor our father, then our children sees an example of us doing that. Now Ephesians 6, 4 is really the missing link in child rearing today. Ephesians 6, 4 says, Provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So Paul cautions parents, and especially fathers, not to provoke their children, but to train their children. So parents need to carefully uh, establish a firm discipline in children to establish respect and honor. It's really disgraceful when children disrespect their parents. They talk back. I told my children years ago, there is only one thing you say to mom and dad, and that is yes. You say, yes, mom and dad. You say, yes, God. Now, if you want to say no, the only person you can say no to is the devil. And you just have to make that clear. No child should ever say no to their parent or argue with their parent. As a parent, you have to teach this commandment. It's called honor your father and mother. This is a commandment of God. It's not your commandment to the children. You have to understand that. You're teaching your children to obey God, not just obey you. Now, again, you can't be telling your children weird things to do. You have to train them up in the way that they should go. You have to train them up in the ways of the Lord also. So if they don't see you obeying your heavenly father, well, then you don't have too much of a leg to stand on in trying to get them to honor and respect you. But this has to be done at a very early age. You, you know, it's the terrible twos and the tremendous threes and all that kind of stuff. But you have to train this respect and honor. We are so missing that in society today. No one respects anybody. No one gives honor to anybody. And it especially starts in the home. So parents, I, I really want you to start working on this commandment and bringing it and establishing it in your home. Now, honoring our parents does not end just when we leave home. When parents are older, uh, Jesus addresses the Pharisees here uh, in Mark chapter 9. He said unto them, Full well you reject the commandment of God, that you may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever curses father and mother, let him die the death. But you say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, Well, it's Corban, that is to say a gift by whatsoever you might as be profited by me, he shall be free, and you suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God to none effect through your tradition, which you have delivered, and many such like things you do. In other words, what Jesus is saying here, you're finding a way, a legalistic way of getting around taking care of your parents. Well, let the church take care of them. Let the welfare program take care of them. Well, let their social security take care of them. You don't have to take care of them anymore. Jesus is saying you're missing the whole heartbeat. Uh, it's not about a money thing. It's about a dignity thing. When your parents are older and maybe they don't have enough money and they're, maybe they've had a stroke or, or maybe they can't, do some cleanliness things and maybe they're drooling or whatever. It, you need to restore their dignity. That's the important thing that I'm talking about here. 
I'm not talking about just taking care of them financially. I'm talking about taking care of their dignity. And that is when we start understanding, honor our father and mother when our father and mother are older. Of course, this carries on into grandparents also. We ought to teach our children to honor their grandparents. And there's time that grandparents can speak into children. The, you know, the stories of old. I used to go to my mom many times because my son would ask me a question. I would say, wow, I don't know that. I guess I'm going to have to ask mom on that. And so we, there's a history there. There's a time factor there that sometimes we're not able to grab a hold of. It wasn't important to us at that time. And so you don't want to cheat your children out of hearing from the grandparents because they've got some good old stories to tell. Amen. Deuteronomy 5, 16. It says, Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, that your days may prolong, be prolonged and that it may go well with you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. So we see this commandment is all through Scripture, from the Torah to the writings to the prophets and on into the epistles and the Gospels that Jesus taught also. Ephesians 6.2, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. So we, the children are beneficiaries when we honor our parents. We receive a blessing because we honor our parents. Now, when I was younger, I, I, I don't remember when I told my testimony on the Sabbath here, but uh, as a young boy, I went to church. I, you know, loved God the best that I knew, but I always respected my parents. I always honored my father and my mother. Even when I was a, a sinner, I still honored them and respected them and would never say anything contrary or, may, or degrade them in any way. Uh, when I was younger, I had a job, I worked, and, and I brought in some money, and I fixed up mom's house for her, and I did some things for my parents. And I can say today that, you know, now that I'm a Christian, uh, I would have done better at that, but even the fact that I did this principle, I'm very blessed today. I'm living a long life. I'm living a prosperous life, and this promise has come to me. I'm a beneficiary of truly uh, obeying this commandment. So we as children are beneficiaries of this, and so we want our children to be beneficiaries also. Now, in 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul is addressing uh, some things here. And I want you to see this. 1 Corinthians 4.17. The Apostle Paul says, For this reason I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, whom will remind you of my ways in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. Now, Paul calls, calls Timothy his son in the Lord. Now, this was not his natural son. But what we're beginning to see here is that we have children in the Lord, or we have fathers of the faith. Can I say it that way? There are certain leaders in our life that's like a spiritual father to us. 1 Timothy uh, 1, 2, it says, Unto Timothy... My own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. So again, Paul calls Timothy a son in the faith. So that would mean Paul was Timothy's father in the faith. 2 Timothy 2.1 Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you've heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit you to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. So in other words, Paul is telling his son in the faith how to be a father in the faith and to also raise up sons in the faith. So we see this principle is dealing with relationships. It's dealing with other people. 
Again, the first four commandments was our relationship with God. Now this commandment is starting our relationship with others. So, so far we see a relationship with our mother and our father. That moves into a relationship with our grandparents. That moves into a relationship with our heavenly father. But it also begins showing us the spiritual principle of we have spiritual fathers and mothers in the faith also. And we want to bring honor to them. Titus, Titus 1.4 says, To Titus, my own son, after the common faith. So we see here Paul leaves Titus in Crete that he should set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city. So we see Paul had raised up Titus and Titus also became a bishop and began to, uh, to establish elders and ordain elders. And so Paul is raising up sons to be fathers to other sons. And it's a beautiful principle. All right, one more thing that I want to uh, talk with you about uh, this evening is Matthew chapter 12 and verse 46. While he yet talked to the people, Jesus here, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, behold, your mother and your brother stand without desiring to speak with you. But he answered and said unto him, uh, who is my mother and who are my brethren? Wow, wait a minute here. I mean, Jesus is supposed to be honoring his mother. Why is he saying this? Well, he's teaching a principle here. He's, he's causing a, a boundaries to be set in this. Sometimes we can take something to the extreme, and Jesus is making a statement here. He stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. Wow. He is pointing to all the family of God uh, that's around him right now. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, listen to this, whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. Jesus is taking this outside the bloodline. Jesus was famous for taking each of the commandments and bringing them to another depth and another realm. When, uh, when we talk about, you'll have no other gods before me, and we're to worship the Lord. Jesus met the woman at the well and says, you don't even know what you worship. You have to worship God in spirit and in truth. So Jesus is always taking a commandment and peeling back a layer of it. He's doing the same thing with honor your father and mother. So what he's addressing here is two problems that are still prevalent today. The first is that natural mothers and brothers think they should have special privileges, okay? But the only privileges that anyone gets is if they do the will of the Father. And that is what Jesus is making very clear to everybody else. Jesus could not set the example, well, my mom and brothers is out there, so they get special privileges. He had to stop that because everyone would have started doing that. Jesus said, no, the only one that has any privileges are those who do the will of the Father. So, and then the second thing that he is addressing here is that Mary would be exalted to a position that's unbiblical. In fact, one denomination even goes so far as to say that she's the mother of God. Well, uh, I'm sorry. The Bible says, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God, and that includes Mary. So Jesus was, was uh, trying to prevent the, the exaltation of someone beyond what God intended. God said, honor your father and mother, don't make them a God, and don't give them, quote, special privileges outside of serving God. So Jesus is just simply saying here, that no one gets any privileges. It's called God looks at people and he determines if they are obeying him, then God will promote them. If they're rebellious and they're not obeying him, then God is not going to give them special privileges if they are rebellious. All right, one last verse, Matthew chapter 20 and verse 20. It's kind of a 2020 vision verse here. 
Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him, desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, or her what, what do you want? And she said, well, grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on your right hand and the other on your left in your kingdom. Jesus answered and said, you don't even know what you're asking. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? Of course, the two sons says, well, sure, we're able. He said unto them, well, I'll tell you what, you will drink of the same cup, but uh, you'll be baptized with the same baptism I'm baptized with. But I, I just want you to know, to sit at my right hand or my left hand, that's not even mine to give. He says, only one can do that. And that is my heavenly father. Again, mothers always think that their children are more special than anyone else's. And so they want them to have the front seat. They want them to have uh, special privileges. Now, th this is understandable. Every parent wants their children to be great in the kingdom of God. But friends, there's no shortcuts. You can't get any favors. If you train your children to serve the Lord, and they decide to serve the Lord. Now, parents, you have to understand, you are not their Savior. Jesus is their Savior. You can present the Savior to them, but if they say no, this is not your responsibility. This is not your failure. Everyone has a will. And here's the good news. If they will serve the Lord, then God will promote them. And God get, will give them many privileges. But it's not for you to try to take some shortcuts to make it happen for them. Well, this is the Sabbath. And we break the bread. And we take the cup. And we decide that this is a day that we set apart unto the Lord. And a time that we bless him. We bless him because of the bread that he brought forth. We bless him because of the cup and the wine that he brought from the earth. We bless him for all that he's blessed us with. And we bless him tonight in this commandment by saying yes. We will say yes to honor our father and mother because it has benefits and we will live long on the earth together. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe who has brought forth bread from the earth. And with your stripes, we were healed. Your body was broken for us. And this is the New Testament in your blood, the renewed covenant that we have now restored between our Heavenly Father. And so tonight, we celebrate the Sabbath, and we fellowship with Him, and we honor our Heavenly Father tonight and give great respect and honor to Him. I call you blessed. I pray that this has been a blessing in your life. And I pray that this word will become life in your life. In Jesus' name, Shabbat Shalom.